And welcome to Friday Facts number 405, the whole belt reader, with a new logistics GUI with my wonderful friend, uh, the Mojo the Reader, right? Yes, yes, that is correct. Or the whole Mojo, one or the other. So, today's Hold Friday Facts uh, is a little bit different. Um, yes. We have a couple of new things, a couple of little minor things, little quick things, and then we have one big thing at the end, which has a lot of text and not a lot of information. Well, actually, yeah, there's a lot of information, but it, it, there's a long lead up. Let's just get to it. Okay, so if you need a whole belt reader to make a sushi belt and count all the items on the sushi belt to make sure you only put the right amount of items on the sushi belt, it requires you to put wires to every single belt, which is ugly. It's kind of annoying. Well, it's ugly, it's inefficient, it's tedious, it obscures the items on the belts, which I think is the really big one, and it doesn't work for underground belts. Does it bother you? The, mm. There's this one belt tile on the bottom right hand corner which is missing the circuit connection. No, that just means that the the, the count is going to be wrong at all times. Yeah, <laughs> that's that's all it means. The sushi belt is just raging so hard because it's not counting. It means eventually, and this is the thing about Factorio and a lot of games is about automation. If you run it for long enough, eventually it's going to jam because you didn't count one tile. And just through time, it's just slowly slipped out and out of sync more and more that eventually it's probably going to jam on you. The chances are very slim. Case. Very if, slim. If you miss a count somewhere in a sushi belt, you're just going to be clogged up with coal. <laughs> coal, wood, iron plate, something. Something that's very common. Copper, copper cable, copper cable. Yep. Copper cable, yeah. There. Yep. Uh, so we decided to make it work nicer. Boss could add a new mode. You can choose when selecting uh, read belt contents mode. And you can now say hold for all belts, and it will do all belts on the current line. I should explain that. The way Factorio works is any any belt from start to end is a continuous piece of belt as far as the game is concerned until it enters a splitter or until it's sideloaded. So you can now... I'm actually curious to see what happens with a really, really, really long belt, because usually it splits it up to like 700-something tiles. It used to be 100, and they've updated it. Uh, or increased it. I don't know what it is now, but I'm th I'm I'm assuming that they've just increased the count, so it's actually not looking for the whole belt segment. But they're in counting the bug every report comes in because someone tries to um, wire up a transcontinental belt. Well, it would be important to know how much junk you're moving from the old base to the new base. Because now it does mean, oh, technically, yeah. you can have the old base deconstruct itself, put it in a couple of, you know, a couple of storage chests, unload it onto a giant transcontinental belt, and ship it across. And just have the new items you need for the new base to be shipped over as you require them, you know, by turning the inserters on and off, and then waiting 30 minutes for the belts to bring it across. But I'm hoping that they have gone and thought about that and gone... We're going to count a whole belt segment, even if it's multiple segments, until it gets to something that interrupts it. Yeah. Um, so it's a lot cleaner. A whole lot cleaner. It uh, is a lot nicer. The it's only visual, too. Yeah, well, the only thing I really wish is we have this red belt side loading down here, and I sort of wish the wall didn't exist for that one. Yeah, maybe, like, it just has posts up and no bar over it, because then what's going to happen when the, the, the stacked plates hit it? It's going to phase through it. No, no, worse than that, worse than that, half the stack's going to slide off. Oh, yeah, de-stacking. Yeah, de-stacking whilst it's been counted. Yep, yep. Uh, yeah, I, I've never been one for sushi belts. I don't like them. They complicate things when they don't have to be complicated, so... Uh, doesn't it, really... I'd be all about me. it for complicating and doing circuits for the sake of it, but I've never really gotten into it. Yeah, I, I've never built a sushi base, and I'm never going to. I can, I can definitely leave that one off my achievement list, and we'll just leave that there. It's a great feature. Uh, having said that, though, mm -hmm. I did see one base a long time ago which where they built it such that um, it dispatched the exact right items to each build directly, like a little train system on belts. Okay. So it wasn't a sushi belt as such. It was more like... Um, a sender receive a transport line and it knew where to send things down which belt too it was quite a system okay so they're using inserters to move things from belt to belt uh no it was all circuit based stopping and starting belts okay but how are they moving things off the the, the, the bus belt to a side belt let's say 
um, you'd stop and start different belts. But things are only traveling on one belt. You can't have I mean, a belt go to multiple places unless you can set the filters. Can I set the filters remotely? I don't think that's ever been a thing. On a splitter. I might have had... It was a long time ago. Yeah, I would have had the um, inserters. Yeah. Yeah, I, with inserters maybe, but it's still... not pass. Pass! Pass! <laughs> so... As I say, it was pretty cool. Just watching all the... You know, a line of green circuits all shoot off to a um, red circuit build. It would be cool, but Whatever. I... You, after it's run for a long enough time, I think that's going to be the thing. After it's run for a long enough time, it's probably just not going to matter because it's still going to look like sushi. Right. Oh, yeah. And, like, even with our new clean GUI, like, this is for science. And I see lots and lots of people do it for science. Science is one of the places where it sort of makes sense. Sort of. Um, as long as, you know, you keep the number one rules in place. Like, normally the belts that are collecting the science need to be faster than the rest of the belts. You need to know how many items total you can sort on the belts. And then you need to make sure that you have a decent ratio of those items on those belts to make sure the labs are filled and blah, 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 blah. It's still pain in the ass. Or you can just chain the labs together, one after the other, with a fast inserter or a stack inserter. Yeah, let's be honest, it's just way easier. It is. And if one inserter's not, not fast enough, add two. Hell, add three. Go nuts. Use lots of inserters. Go! Go nuts! Yeah. I'm not a fan of sushi belts. Um, I can see the point of using them for science, like I said, because you can fit, you know, all seven items on one belt, but you're going to hit a throughput problem. Whereas you can just feed three belts, like, quite easily into labs. That way you get half a lane for each type of science. And you can put in the seven science without too much hassle, using some underground tricks and even using an inserter to grab it and feed it to another inserter. There are ways around this problem. Um, See, that's really what it comes down to for me for sushi belts. Is A sushi belt just can't get enough science in. I want to get thousands of science into a lab a minute. Yeah. And a sushi belt just doesn't quite do it. Otherwise, I would do it. Oh, look, if you want a better system than a sushi belt, uh, put it all into a train wagon. And then use that to load into oh, a couple, yeah. of, couple, of, couple of labs. Done. Done. Just have it, have it belt, you know, have a belt base that loads it up onto a little train that just shuffles forward and backwards. Oh, no, 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 no not like even a train. A line. Just a wagon. Because that way you can oh, yeah, filter no. the wagon slots. Yeah. A single wagon on a single piece of track. Done. Problem solved. Easier than a sushi. Good. So, uh, then Many we... Many solutions. The what? <laughs> Many solutions instead of sushi. Yes. Many easier solutions rather than sushi. All right. So then we have faster sub su sequential, subsequent rocket launches. In late game, you can craft and prepare rockets pretty fast, but there was always a throughput bottleneck. The beautifully crafted animations taking a long time. We didn't really want to increase the animation speed as it might look a bit weird. So we figured out a compromise. Now, before we go any further... Uh, we went and looked at the wiki, because I was pretty sure we had the right numbers, but we wanted to double check. Uh, the total time to launch a rocket is 61.417 seconds. Just go with 62. It's going to take you about 62 seconds to launch a rocket. Which means, if you only have one silo, you can't get to one rocket per minute. It's just never possible. Ever possible. It's just can't be done. So they've changed things. Uh, uh, so a rocket solo can craft and buffer an extra rocket inside. So originally when a rocket launched, it had to clear the power, well, clear the clear the screen, I guess is the best way of putting it. So as soon as it cleared off the little screen we're looking at right now, the doors would start to shut. And that's when you could start loading up the components for the next rocket. And now that could happen in advance and you can pre-buffer an extra rocket ready to go. And then after launching, if there is a buffered rocket, the door closing and opening animation or sequence is now skipped. Which means... You just get another rocket. You get another rocket and they just launch forever, which is great. Like, there's no point shutting an opening in the silo all the time. You know, we're thinking about wear and tear here. Um, which means we've already looked at it and you save the 20 seconds... For... Uh, plus a bit. Technically, you save on crafting as well because you're crafting on top while the, the first rocket is still doing its launch animation, or or while it's or while it's lifting, actually. So you you it's, it's you save the on one. the rocket parts must be assembled and solo so they can build a rocket before it's deployed. So you save on that twenty seconds. Plus you save on prepping the rocket for a launch. So that's bringing the silo, bringing the rocket into the silo, lifting up all that sort of stuff. 
And technically, you also save on the reset. So it brings a rocket launch down to about 35 seconds, which is pretty fast compared to what we had. It's, it is, yes. It's going to make a massive difference, for, especially for those people that li build large bases around a whole lot of science per minute, which I'm assuming is still going to be, you know, the grand plan for those that are playing Space Age in the future, even those not playing Space Age in the future, even more so. So, um... I mean, having said that, having, um, like, you know, 16, 32 silos all launched simultaneously is pretty entertaining. It there is. something to be, to, to be said for having that happen. Even better if you can sync them all up so they launch at the same time. I think that's what the real key is. Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Loading all the, si uh, all the silos at once and get them all to lift off at the same time. Oh, then now I thought of a use for the, um... So I was struggling to find a use for the whole belt reader. Uh -huh. Synchronizing it. That's actually one use. Synchronizing launches would be a lot easier with a whole belt reader. Why? So you can track what's um, going in and out of the silo. You have yep, to. it doesn't matter so much, but it means you can track what's going in. And, and if something's... Because usually what happens is one of the rocket parts falls short. And so... So rather than launch you 16 that. rockets at once, you end up launching 15 because one of them's short. And then yeah. that one's going to wait for the next pulse to put in the satellite and go again. Yeah, there maybe. Used to be this trick you do where you would um, force the rocket parts into a through a splitter into a siding and then merge back again, and you have like three tiles long. And then you would measure the non-priority side, and when that receives parts, that means that line's backed up. Yeah. Yeah. And you do that to all three, and then you know the rockets are ready once all three are backed up. Yeah. I should also know that this is with the new recipe. So this is uh, low density structures, uh, rocket control unit, uh, rocket control, low density structures, rocket fuel, and blue circuits. Yes. Because, um, it's the cheap recipe. Yeah. Like you had enough blue circuits in the first place. Yeah. Yeah, it's not like we didn't have lots of those. I mean, technically, you do. Uh, technically, they go into rocket circuits. control units, so technically, it's, it's maybe a saving. But then also, but those, technically, those product productivity. Those had, yeah, yeah, those had productivity. Yeah, yeah. So that's your flip side. You know, you had productivity. Sure, you got to add more grid and green circuits to them to, to the you know make the speed modules to then make the. You know, it's more circuits overall, but there were blue circuits involved and there were productivity modules, which is going to cut them back by 40%. Like, that's significant. Yeah! Even even for one, um, level one productivity modules, is, it's a small saving, but it's a saving nonetheless. Yeah, it's, it's yeah. So, uh, new faster rockets. Can't complain. Can't complain. Yeah. Uh, All good. Yes, so uh, change means the throughput of a single rocket solo is more than doubled. I'm not according to our maths, but okay. Uh, it's also super important for Space Age, where you send a lot more rockets. And then we have pump filters. It can be annoying when you get some tray mixed up and dump a whole bunch of lubricant into your crew oil inputs. Well, that's fine. Everything can be pre-lubricated, ready for the next load. I yeah. know what you're complaining about. Just lubricating your pipes. you got to lubricate your um, heavy oil, don't you? Uh, you've got to lubricate the pump. Okay, this this is working yes. fine. Okay, I don't see any issues. So I can take it even one step further and say technically heavy oil is lubricant. Yeah, but they say, they say crude oil, but you know. They, they do say crude oil, yes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so they added a filter to our pumps. Now, I've got to say, like, this is one that doesn't hurt. It, it's not good. It's not bad. It just is. Uh, first off, don't mix up your, 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 your trains. This is very important. Uh, secondly, you could already get around this if you were bad and had a habit of mixing up your trains with a circuit network. Thirdly, <laughs> thirdly, this is a very well solved uh, solution. Yeah. Well, thirdly, um, if you get lubricant in your crude oil pipes, the devs added this feature where you can click on a pipe and say "delete entire contents of pipe network," and the problem magically went away. It goes away. So. The only difference is you're now going to have a lubricant train parked in your crude oil station that's going to sit there waiting to unload before it goes away forever until you realize you're out of oil, which means you're out of petroleum, which means you're out of plastic, which means you're out of red circuits, which means you're out of blue circuits. The rocket's no longer launching, all because there's one lube train parked in the wrong spot, which was entirely your fault to start with. One job. Yeah. It still comes yeah, back job. to, in Factorio, it's always your fault. 
Yeah. Yeah. So, nice feature, I guess. Yeah, um, nice feature. I, I think it feels a little underwhelming just because we've worked around it for so long. I've never had the problem that I've needed to filter a pump. Like, See, never. I've, I've had to do it, but I just had the train stop, read stop train, and then enable when the contents matched the enable signal. Actually, I, I, the, the best I've had to do is I've had to filter a mixed pipe of multi-fluids, okay? So I've had to output the pump into a single tile of pipe hooked up to three different tanks and then made sure that the pump only ran when the tanks were not full. Therefore, if I put, like, say, lube into that one pipe segment, it would go into the lubricant tank. But the heavy oil tank and the crude oil tank, it couldn't flow into because obviously they had other fluids in there. And if I empty the tank, there is a chance that lubricant could end up in two different tanks rather than just staying in one. So that's the closest I've come. And it probably wasn't, it wouldn't have been lube. It would have been light oil, heavy oil, and crude oil because it was for flamethrowers. But yeah, I did. I also remember a very long time ago using the, the old pumps, the one by one pumps as um, mixed pipe filters, pulling out the, um, you know, the wrong fluid using those pumps. They already acted as a kind of filter. I don't, I don't remember, remember that. how it worked. I don't remember that at all. And it wasn't. It was very slow at it as well. I I remember putting weird. I'm sucked. I remember putting weird fluids into steam engines with a pump, a one by one pump, to remove fluids you didn't want because steam engines just deleted fluids, whether that was hot or not. They just magically disappeared. So if you put crude oil into your, if you put lubricant into your crude oil system, there is no way to magically delete it because that feature didn't exist. But you could put a steam engine in there and a pump and it just suck the whole thing dry eventually and just empty out all the fluid. Um, the, yeah. It was a sad day for speedrunners when that was changed. Yeah, because they used to just <laughs> delete. They used to avoid um, all of the excess oil, like the yeah. heavy oil. Yeah, but now they just get petroleum direct, so it doesn't really matter. And hell, <laughs> we're, <laughs> we're down to Factorio in like an hour and something now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So then we have the new Logistics Network GUI. So Logistics GUI was added back in version 15 and only had cosmetic changes from there onwards. And I remember how bad it was and also how awesome it was that we were added to the game. And a lot of people still don't it's even know about it. It was added because it was better than nothing, but at the same time, it still, it, it falls very much short Look, um, of the, the rest of the GUIs that are available. As I said, a lot of people don't even realize it's in the game. The amount of times I've been on stream and I've pressed the L button to bring up the logistics GUI and people are going, what is that? How do I get it? Is that a mod? I'm like, no, it's base game. It's L, L for logistics. Okay, like have fat fingers, right? Press more buttons on the keyboard more often. Like you probably found it one of these times when you press P for production stats and slipped and got L instead. It's the logistics network. It shows you what's in the logistics network. The Ask the question, like, why is all storage full? Why do we have 200,000 wood? Who is not burning the wood? Yes. Um, 27,000 wood in the screenshot. Yeah, enough said. Um, why is there a copper duck with uh, 4.7 million? Um, or why is there a collection of wooden chests in, in the shape of a copper duck um, yeah. holding 4.7 million wood? Well, the, 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 that's not real question. That's that's the, that's not in the logistics network, but that's besides the point. So, uh, you press L to open the GUI. Select the network with the drop down, so you could have it has multiple networks, one for each robot network, including yourself and other players. Yes. So, if you want to see what's in your friend's inventory, when they say no, I didn't take, use logistics network. Okay. Find their inventory. You to pick through and find it because it's just network. It doesn't actually give yeah, you yeah, identify yeah, them yeah, in any way. It's, it's, it's a pain in the ass, but at least you have a possibility. Yep. Uh, members tab, two column list showing. A few, a few clues. It just comes up as one cell. Yeah, it's one cell because it only has one container, I guess, inside the network. One robot item in the network being the player. And as long as they're not inside another network. Yeah, at which point they disappear. I wonder if they're going to handle that. Anyway, let's go continue. Okay. <laughs> so, on. so, and a search bar. Search bar. Yeah. If you want to find a player, search for SMG uh, inside multiple networks. So, iteration one. 
the new trains overview GUI in Friday Facts number 364 was a winning formula by my book, so they just copied it. Then I list on the side to categorize things, a mini map to give specific information about each individual related item, and then we've clicked repair packs, there's 5,000 network, and I honestly don't care where the repair packs are stored, and I don't really want to have mini map icons for all the spots where we have repair packs. I just don't care. Yeah. It's, poten it's potentially, um, like, it works for eight locations there, but there's potential for, like, if you have repair packs in every mining outpost, that's its own network. It's its own network, but outpost. repair packs is probably the best scenario, because if you're playing on a death world, every single robo-port is going to have some amount of repair packs. There was 1,142 cells in this network, which means this list is going to be 100 long. Like, easily. Um, bad selection. Bad selection, but sure, let's roll with it. Okay. Um, you can't identify the networks in the drop-down because they don't have a... Actually, no, you, you can't identify Number of cells, row reports. Oh, okay. So it's the same problem we had previously. You, you've, you're just given a this area of somewhere. Yep. It takes extra tedious clicks to change the network. So find the network you want takes even longer. Yep. That's always been a problem with the current iteration. So iteration two, we're trying to track all the network selection. The first step was to change it from a drop down to a list, instantly better. The second step was to add an icon in front, differentiate the mobile and RoboPort networks. So now we can see spiders, we can see players, so now you can definitely find out when your friend has nicked off so with the only the power armor that we've made in the game. Continuing. Um, and we can select the different networks. And I'm hoping we get some sort of map view of, you know, where that network is and how big that network is, but we'll continue. And then we keep the list on the right, which I still think is mostly useless. Yep. Biggest problem is still identifying networks. My conclusion was, ah, uh, it's basically the only way to identify a network is by looking at it. So I added a select network mini map. Uh, this started to get there. I can quickly go through the networks list and visually identify the networks with the mini map. Correct. Uh, however, the GUI starts to look like a monster. We got two lists and to fill in some space, I added some random network information and so many mini maps. It's just an absolute ghastly mess. So iteration three. We've removed the whole right hand side. We just didn't need it. Okay. It was it was less is more. Useless. Okay. Uh this iteration set it on the idea that list of items is not so useful. With logistic networks, you generally don't care where the items are. You only care if there's enough in the system. So I removed the list of items, added some generic table of icons. This means we could cram a lot more of it onto the screen. This is true. Uh except it's oddly out of proportion, which I don't really get. Uh, the minimap is rectangular, which I don't think is an issue, and the table of items is too yeah. wide. That's the bit I get. That makes sense. Yeah, because factory, everything's delivered in the right-hand side in a little column, like six wide and many, many long. It's just how everything is done in Factorio. Um, it's inconsistent. Yeah, it is, this thing's getting, it's shaping up, but it's not consistent with the rest of the game. Yeah. So then we have iteration number four. Obvious improvement, uh, move the items to the side, gives us more height, which means we can make the minimap square and bigger. It's still going to take technically the same amount of space, but sure. Uh, the second improvement came from Insight using the last GUI. Uh, the number of members generally pretty small, five to ten at most. So the members tab was often really empty, uh, looking when compared to how much space the item tabs reserved. So reason we have point having them in tabs, we could always just show both. So they're really... Uh, so it's really unlikely that members will become too big for us to handle nicely. And can I unloop that and give me my controls? I really cool. want to know why a red transport belt is a member of the network. Uh, because it has the logistics button ticked on it. Oh yeah, that'll do it. So, uh, members is all the logi bots, all the construction bots, all the rover bots, and everything else connected to the logistics network, like the red belt. For some reason, somebody's ticked the button and said, hey, this belt can only move if, I don't know, there's too many power poles in the network for some other arbitrary number. Um, it's a very specific thing to do. Yeah. But uh, we do have a nice mini-map overlay so you can see exactly where these networks are, um, which means that if you want to go look at a specific network somewhere on the map, because let's be honest, you do, you don't really want to have a giant drop-down list where you've got to find the right robot port, the right network. It's just easy to zoom there on the map because that's the one I care about. And you can click on it, which is awesome. Uh, so beautiful map interface only makes sense to have the selection interface work with the mini map. Another nice 
but a feature was added with the ability to rename logistics networks so you could keep track of things in your own way. That's handy. Now, that is actually useful. Instead of just having network 1 through network 200. I don't think it's a feature I'll ever use more than three oh, yeah, times. Oh, we'll never use it. Or maybe maybe the spiders will be named or something, but... Um, um, or, you know... But if I a, name a, a spider, like, if I name a spider outright, I'm assuming it's going to take that name for that logistics network. Potentially. Like, in the previous one, it was called Network 1, Network 2. So I'm assuming that now it's called Clonin Spider, it's now automatically called Clonin Spider in the logistics network. So... I'm assuming it's just copying that data across and they haven't actually named the networks. One can, one can hope. But like, who's or... going to name a network like the Western Wall? Because I guarantee oh, you, will. in 12 hours, that's not the Western Wall anymore. It's five Roman ports just randomly le left there because the Western Wall has, does not exist there anymore. It's moved. It's gone it's way up. <laughs> it's either expanders or the biters <laughs> have torn it down. Yeah, one or the other. Um, so then, the only problem they had is it covered up all the GUIs. So you lost everything in the top right-hand corner, being like you researched and all your map tags and all that sort of stuff. You also lost access to your toolbar, which is slowly becoming more and more useless as we keep getting updates. So they went and made it part of the remote viewer. So now it works like pressing M on the keyboard to bring up map view to remotely look at anything. Which means I'm really hoping that we get into a situation where I can use this interface to look at different networks and also build from it. That's the the implication. Is if you're doing it in remote view, then you can do all the interaction. So that's going to change things. Now, I don't see a button here to change to a different surface, which I think think should be added or it's hidden or it's hidden because they haven't unlocked multi-surfaces yet but i doubt it uh the other thing is i think network number four so the actual list of what's in the network should be on the right hand side because that's the like default behavior when you hover over a box that it yes. shows the contents of the right hand side but apart from um, that, I like the only it. argument against that is that it wouldn't be that, so it wouldn't be consistent with the rest of the. Mm, you're looking on yeah, the left it, to pick a network, and then you're looking on the right to look, see what's in the network. I can understand. Don't get me wrong. I can understand that argument. But there's, there's an arguments that can go both ways. There's one thing about saying that the information should be together, and then there's also it should be on the left to be consistent with everything else. Yeah, but look, you can probably move your your mouse down like like one set of tiles or, or, or one button's worth to click on the next button without like looking at exactly what you're doing to click the next network over and over and over when you're searching for a network. And let's be honest, you're not going to be using the logistics network panel on the left-hand side to actually pick network number four, five, six, or seven. You're going to be zooming on the map to find the network you want and then left clicking then on clicking it. On them. And then you are going to have... You're gonna, what we want to do. You're going to automatically, because of muscle memory, look on the right-hand side to look at what's in the network like you would with a storage box and then go, oh, shit, in this one GUI, it's on the left. So the question I have is, do we need to have the logistics network there at all? Like the list of networks, um, do we need that anymore? If I can literally just zoom on a map to anywhere... I think the only ones I need is players and spiders. If you wanted to navigate to a specific one, you would still need it there. Why can't I just do that with map view? Please be patient. Well, I have the list. The, 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 why, why would I click on anything in the list for the logistics networks? Um, the only reason you would do that is if the network isn't clickable on the map. So that would be players and spiders. So players, spiders, potentially players and spiders are clickable anyway, mm -hmm. or if something on a different them, planet. If you find them, let's be honest, players and spiders, if you find them, right? They're very elusive. And 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 network one through to 380, if they're spread over to multiple planets, is pointless. So I don't really want to try and find the right network in a list, even if I go through the effort to name some of them. If I have a button that lets me collect, select which surface, all right, 
above Logistics Network. So if I just give, give a button with my planet drop down lists and I can pick a different planet, and then Logistics Networks is literally the spiders and the players. That's it. Like trains, if trains ever get Logistics Networks. Okay. Uh, space platforms, maybe? No, because there are no robots in space. No, they, they have their own system. Yeah, so... um, the, the, the Hidden Scorpions. Yeah, yeah, the Hidden Scorpions that hopefully build things or end up as a challenge on the next map, you know. To replace the biters. Um, yeah, I, I only think I want I want an addition for the the list so I can pick different surfaces, i.e. different planets. I also want to have just players and spiders and then move the contents of the network to the right-hand side. That would be the only changes I'd be making because that makes sense. It, like, fits in with everything else. And if I need to pick a network, then I click on it. Like, if people are pedantic and they really want to have a list of networks... Give me a list of all the ones I've custom named. If I name one main base, put it on the list. It can live on the list now. Your favorites list? Yeah, favorites list. I, I just, if I name it, like if I name it good enough, it then lives on the list forever. If I don't name it because it's some random robot I put down with some random ore mine just so I had robot coverage to do, I don't know, repairs of the lasers or, or rearming a wall or something like that, I don't need it in the network list. I'm not going to search through a network list to find some random row report in some outpost or some front wall. I'm going to scroll there on the map and click on it. Because I know physically where it's located on the map, whereas I have no idea where it's located in the list. Anyway, I think that's it. I think that's all the rants I have for today. Yeah, I, I think that's that's enough ranting for, yep. for JD today. Yep, yep, yep. I had to get in one today. Uh, so I do believe... I do believe... I don't know if it's last week, because neither of us can remember... But I do believe that you did say sometime previously that there'd be an update to Logistics GUI. Uh, yes. Um, mainly because I knew that it was oh, very so much far out there. Um, behind everything else. It's so far out there. And like I said, just people don't know it exists. Um, yeah, most people don't know it exists. So, yes. The, the Mojo technically has one somewhere right somewhere in the, the, in, in the list. Uh, your predictions for next week, Mojo? Because now you have a streak you need to maintain. Um, so to carry on with the ones that I've been going with, the next one has to be something that's currently not acceptable. That's so vague. <laughs> that's so vague. Like what, Bojo? What would you think that is currently unacceptable that could be in a future Friday Facts? I don't know how to turn a HTML status code into something tangible in game. <laughs> <laughs> uh-huh. I'm just trying to draw this thing out to number 418. Uh, why? What's the 418? I don't know my HBO codes. Uh, you got to wait till 418. I'll go look it up after the video. All right. Uh, so, <laughs> so, so. Uh, it's the one that should have lined up with April 1st. Oh, okay. Okay. Or this week. Uh, <laughs> so, so my prediction, as always, is going to be, it's going to be biters. Like, I need biters. biters. I need biters. I need to know what challenges there are. On the different planets, I need to know what I need to shoot at. I need to know what weapons I get. Because there have been so many... So many changes in the game. They've said there are new weapons. There have been so many sections of the GUI that they've hidden from us. Which are, like, towards the end of the inventory, which is where weapons live. But they haven't shown us what any of those things are. So I'm curious... I want to see combat. I want to see biters. Combat and biters. I mean, having said that, uh, we are getting close to seeing more content stuff. Like the, it's been a little while since we saw the Fungola stuff. You reckon we're gonna have another update with more planet stuff, or possibly revisiting something? With or revisiting the existing platforms. planets or platforms or something. I don't know. I don't know if there's anything else that's not covered with the space platforms. Um. And I don't think people really want to have it and go into the details of exactly what the recipes are. I wonder if we'll see, find out about the landing platform from the... Oh, that's um, a good point. We don't, don't know, know about that yet. We don't know. We know things get up with rockets. We don't know how things get down. Yeah. Apart there, from it was the placeholder thing. We just sort of... That, that, I think the last thing they said was we just teleport. Uh, yeah, I think that was the answer. Things just magic their way down. We don't have details. 
So maybe that'll come in the next Friday Facts. I don't know. Either way, we're going to call this here. As always, thank you guys so much for watching. Do hope you've enjoyed. And we will see you next week for Friday Facts number 406. All right, that's it. We're out. Bye. Bye-bye.